Today we're looking at active reading strategies. So you as a reader have two options. You can read passively or actively. A passive reader is not giving much thought to what the words mean, and that leads to a lot of confusion. On the other hand, the active reader controls the words by placing themselves into the text. They're using the tools they have learned to engage the text itself. Each step of reading is involving a strategy. So there's a checklist of basic things you need to know before you begin active reading. First, you need to read with a pen or pencil. This is preparing you to take notes, which is our second goal. Your notes aren't just whatever, they're interesting, inf important, or confusing information. And these notes, and whatever else you're thinking is going to circle around, are the things the author aren't going to do for you. It's not always going to be laid out on the page. Sometimes you're going to have to do some critical thinking. So these notes are not always going to be easy. Instead of just being bulleted outline points, it's more of a journal. They're your reactions, ideas, and questions. But be sure to note the page numbers or quotations that are going to help you connect your reactions to the page. I have found that instead of a journal, sticky notes sometimes work best. Now, most of us are using electronic text here, um, so it's time to start looking at some alternates. An online journal? A Word document, perchance? You could copy and paste the series of information you need, a sentence, and then your reactions along with it. There are six strategies to actively read. The first of which is to mark or highlight or sticky note or word process important words, phrases, or sentences so you can look back at them. Two, ask questions to improve your understanding. What does this mean or why is the writer talking about this? Can help you think critically about a text. Three, clarify what is happening. You have a lot going on between the text and your thinking. Keep up by taking notes about the sequence of events or important details. Four, react and connect by listening to your inner dialogue as you read. What are your comments or reactions? How does this text relate to you? Remember those text to you connections we made last part? They're gonna fall in here. Also take some time to compare and contrast the text, experiences, and characters to your own life. Five, visualize the people, places, and actions being described to you. Look for sensory details, hearing, sight, smell, to help you come up with these. This internal film of a text helps you remember the important details. Sketch these down in your notes. Literally, draw a picture. Six, predict what you think is going to happen next. Be it a science text or a fiction book, look for the hints that are gonna help you answer what's gonna happen next. Keep note of your predictions. It'll be fun to see if they come right, true or not. Here we have a text from Into Thin Air. I was finally at Camp 4, and only one obstacle stood between me and safety, a steep bulge of rock-hard ice that I'd have to descend without a rope. But the weather had deteriorated into a full-scale blizzard. Snow pellets borne on 70-mile-an-hour winds stung my face. Any exposed skin was instantly frozen. The tents, no more than 200 horizontal yards away, were only intermittently visible through the whiteout. There was zero margin for error. I sat down to marshal my energy. Suddenly, Harris appeared out of the gloom and sat beside me. At this point, there was no mistaking that he was in appalling shape. His cheeks were coated with an armor of frost. One eye was frozen shut and his speech was slurred. He was frantic to reach the tents. After briefly discussing the best way to negotiate the ice, Harris started scooting down on his butt, facing forward. Andy, I yelled after him. It's crazy to try it like that. He yelled something back, but the words were carried off by the screaming wind. A second later, he lost his purchase and was rocketing down on his back. 200 feet below, I could make out Harris's motionless form. I was sure he'd broken at least a leg, maybe his neck, but then he stood up waved that he was okay, and started stumbling toward camp. I could see three or four people shining lights outside the tents. I watched Harris walk across the flats to the edge of camp, a distance he covered in less than 10 minutes. After my climb down, I was in camp. 
I fell into my tent, more exhausted than I'd ever been in my life. But I was safe. Andy was safe. The others would be coming into camp soon. We'd done it. We'd climbed Mount Everest. All right, so let's look at our first strategy here. We're marking or highlighting the text. So I'm looking for words, phrases, or sentences that are going to stand out to help my understanding. I have gone through and put these words into purple. So these are words that are going to stand out to help build the setting for me. So we're talking about camp four and we see that our conflict here in these paragraphs is that our narrator's really tired and he's got to get down 200 feet of straight ice. So I've highlighted these bits, including um, there's a blizzard and he's really cold and he's getting, it looks like, sounds like he's getting frostbite. He doesn't have a rope. And then his friend joins him and decides to scoop down on his butt and he kind of takes a little unplanned sledding adventure, but he stumbles toward camp. These notes are all great and all, but if you look back at your marks and highlights and you can't build a logical summary of the text from them, you've done something that's not going to help yourself in the end. You need to go back and look for what the main goal of your paragraphs are. Are you getting the important details? Next, we are going to ask questions of our text. So same paragraphs. And again, I have my highlighting. So in my first paragraph, why doesn't the narrator have a guide? He's on Mount Everest. And why is he stuck without a rope? He's exhausted. Okay, well, here comes Andy Harris in the second paragraph. Why is he also alone? Were he and the narrator together and then they got split up because of the blizzard? Okay, and after Harris decides he's going about it the same, a different way than the narrator is, what would have happened if he had broken his leg or neck? And what would have happened to the narrator then? Would the narrator have stepped in to help? I'm building more questions even as I'm asking these questions. And these are the kind of things going on in my brain. I'm just taking the time to write them down. As you answer these questions, as you're reading, make sure to collect them in your journal or on your sticky notes. That way you have a connection to go back. Again, like when we made our marks and highlights, if I can't answer my own questions from these, they're no use to me later. These are also gonna help us with our reviews, quizzes, tests, and our essays. All right, next, we need to clarify our reading. Okay, so I've read this paragraph, I've made highlighting marks, I have asked questions, and I'm going to need to keep up a, an order of events just because so much happens here. So I've gone through paragraph by paragraph and pulled out the major events. I've put in specific details from my highlighting and some things here may answer questions that I've already written. This analysis allows me to think a little more critically about my text, and it's giving me a chance to kind of summarize within my own brain. So because these are my notes, a list made sense to me. This might not work for you. Maybe you want to do a graphic organizer with arrows and circles and things. That's okay. So I've got number one, the narrator can see camp four, but then I've given specific details from my highlighting marks. I work through every paragraph all the way down to when the narrator makes it safely back to his tent. This might inspire more things though. So I've written out my order of events and it's led me to start thinking about the connections of what I'm seeing. In other words, I'm beginning to ask more questions. Why doesn't the narrator check to see if Harris makes it in safely? I mean, he sees him get down the hill. He thinks he's probably broken something, but doesn't even bother to check and see if he's injured. That's not a very good friend. Active readers will do this. Repeat those steps to improve their understanding. You might go back and re-change your, repeat steps or change your steps multiple times. React and connect with your text is our next strategy. Okay, as I'm reading along, some of those things that I highlighted 
are also text connections I'm making. Now, I see whiteout conditions. And if I lived in some place like Florida, I might not have ever seen them. But here in Colorado, I remember back in 2003, the blizzard was so bad that when my dad and I got stuck on I-25, the whiteout conditions meant they were closing the interstate behind us. A little further down, we're seeing that Harris is sledding down on his back to get to camp faster. And I even made a comment as we were reading together that it's kind of a text to world thing. It reminds me of sledding. Next, we get visualization. Now, while other people are kind of stuck with just drawing pictures, those of us in internet high schools are lucky enough that we can Google things. So here we have an image of Camp 4 from Mount Everest. I don't need to question what that looks like. I understand. And you can even see some footpaths there. As the narrator is talking about that horizontal slope of ice, well, I think I can see it. We talk about frostbite, specifically the way Andy Harris's eyes are frozen shut and his cheeks are frozen. This is a Canadian hiker, Charles Gauld, um, and he was pretty badly frostbitten back in 2009 when he went on a rescue mission for some hikers. But this is an actual image of the whiteout conditions from the 1996 group that were up on Mount Everest. That's how bad it was. There's not much visibility there. These are helping me build the visuals into my reading. Next, I need to predict what is going to happen. Now, I see down here in my last paragraph that our narrator says he's excited because he's safe and Andy, his friend, is safe. The others will be coming into camp soon. Well, if you know anything about the 1996 Mount Everest disaster, Many, many people, over 90 people went up the mountain. And I know just from reading the front cover where that quote is from, 1996, Mount Everest disaster, people died, a lot of them. So I'm gonna make a prediction that the quote, the others will be coming into camp soon, probably isn't going to be true. Otherwise we wouldn't have much of a book. Remember that active reading takes these strategies and applies them in a logical fashion. It takes practice, and it certainly takes time to get good at. If you have additional questions, contact your teacher. They'll help you put it into action.